Oh, buddy boy, another video like this. So in 2008, we were graced by the delectable Transformers animated toy line and cartoon that still to this day, if you ask me, is the best Transformers show we have ever gotten. And one of the best toy lines we have ever gotten. Probably top five or top three, I'd say. And ever since then... It feels like there's been a soft spot in, in the fandom for Transformers Animated, especially for the toy line. Because you look up a lot of the toys on the aftermarket, they are super expensive. Shockwave, Blitzwing, Leader Class Megatron, Voyager Optimus, so many figures. Now there are a handful that aren't that expensive on the aftermarket, like Leader Class Magnus, Bumblebee, Jazz, figures like that, Oil Slick. Most of these figures are fantastic. Now I'm not talking about any of the gimmick-based figures in this video. I'm just talking about some standout deluxes, voyagers, and leader class figures that were released in the animated toy line. So without further ado, let's get right down to the nitty gritty. So with, let's start off with deluxe class and RC. Now this was one of the first RC G1 type figures that we got in Transformers. The very first one was Energon four years prior. And I believe this was probably the second new RC figure that we got ever in Transformers, which is pretty crazy. I have this figure myself. It's just missing the wings. I do want to get those wings at some point soon. But the Cybertronian mode is just so sleek. The coloring, it it's obviously RC, but they did throw in a little bit of a red hue to it. Because back then they were scared to make, to make uh, mostly pink toys because this was considered a boys toy line back then. Obviously that's not really an issue now since Thrilling 30 we've gotten a bunch of pink RC figures. So, But it's just interesting to see how times have changed. But overall the articulation on the figure is so good. Especially for deluxes nowadays you, you don't get some of that articulation that you got with this RC. Forearm swivel, nicely ball jointed head, you get ball jointed hip skirt armor for better movement, you get toe articulation. Like how many deluxes these days have toe articulation? It's just amazing. And then the weapon storage is just so genius and smart storing on her shoulder packs there. So cool. And then my boy Jazz. Oh man, this Jazz figure, probably one of the best Jazzes we have ever gotten. The way the nunchucks store as like the, what are they called, exhaust pipes for the vehicle mode is just so clever and genius. The vehicle mode itself is like this old school sort of sports car, I guess, and it just works. The detail on the rims of the wheels is just so cool, especially for a $10 deluxe back then in the silver paint. You really can't go wrong with that. And the robot mode itself is just so sleek. It's not perfect, you know, the arms do bump into the legs a little, which is awkward. And the head positioning is a little bit weird. But what I like to do is I take it off the ball joint and I rest it on the the circular portion and I put some tack in there so it doesn't just fall off. And it makes for a bit of a better head design in my opinion. But overall, a great jazz figure with all the articulation you basically need. You got wrist swivel, waist swivel, deep double jointed elbows, and double jointed knees, I believe, as well. This is another figure I have. Very good. Uh, Ratchet here. He comes with all the different uh, tools to fix up bots. It's just so amazing. You really don't see that with Ratchet figures or basically any Transformers anymore. The storage for those are so cool in robot mode. Other than Siege Ratchet, we haven't gotten any tools with a Ratchet figure since this figure. So it's really special in that sense. And Black Arachne and Waspinator, figures that we didn't get uh, in, for years after Beast Machines ended. They were scared to do Beast Wars characters because of how bad uh, Beast Machines did. So it was really refreshing to see these characters make a return. And then we got Cheetor as a convention exclusive as well, which is a repaint that I really do want to get, especially with it being inspired by the trans tech design. And that blur is a great figure too. I know people have uh, complaints about the loose ball joints over time. Mine has the same issues, but 
it's really not that big of a deal, especially if you have something to tighten those joints. Uh, the vehicle mode is sleek. The robot mode is probably my favorite blur design ever, right behind IDW blur, I'd say. Freaking lockdown. Oh my god, guys. This lockdown figure is still genius till this day. Another figure I have that I just absolutely cherish in my collection. The way they handled the engineering on a deluxe, mind you, that is the size of a Voyager. Oh man, the way they handled those legs for the transformation to make him the same height and a little bit taller than the Voyager Optimus, I'm pretty sure. So he's basically a tall Voyager packed in as a $10 deluxe, especially back then. That is insane. And then you still have so many genius deluxe figures like Soundwave, Rodimus Minor, Samurai Prowl, the regular Prowl. Oil Slick is even a banger, and then you get the Cybertronian mode Ironhide and Ratchet. There are a couple mediocre ones like Sentinel and Snarl and Swindle with all the terrible clear plastic. And then you get Jetfire and Jetstorm 2-pack, which uh, has a lot of clear plastic as well. And the leader class figures, you get three new leader class molds for the toy line, are all fantastic leader class figures in their own right. The one that's the weakest, I'd say, is probably Bulkhead. He has no head articulation. Uh, it can only move one way, and, ex and it's spring-loaded, unless if you throw some tack underneath if you want it to stay in a position. So I think he's the weakest due to the articulation, but if you look at Megatron and Magnus, they basically have all the articulation that you would need for a leader class figure outside of Magnus missing ankle pivot and waist swivel. And Magnus has hand articulation. Um, he's got all these flip out weapons and the articulation is still decent to begin with. And you have ankle pivot, waist swivel, wrist swivel on Megatron, which back then for leader class was kind of rare, but usually leader class back then was something where you would get the most articulation out of the toy line. So it's not that surprising, but still genius for a 2008 figure. And Bulkhead, it's saved by all the features, honestly. He's got the removable missile launchers, all the different flip-out weapons on the arms and in vehicle mode. And he comes with the Headmaster that you could plug into the head, which is super cool. And just overall, I own all three of these leader class figures. I'm missing a couple parts on Magnus, like the knee pads and those little blue pieces behind the shoulders that are on mushroom pegs. Uh, other than that, they're complete and in great shape, and th if you ever want to pick up a big, chunky figure to mess around with, these are three great options, and they're honestly not that pricey on the aftermarket, especially Magnus, and Voyager class, probably the weakest size class here, because Starscream is a dud, I'd say Grimlock is a dud, because he's way too small and just not really a great figure to, to begin with, same thing with Lugnut. In the Cybertronian mode, Megatron is decent, but a bit lackluster in terms of the paint and just the overall design of him. Uh, and Bulkhead, obviously way, way too small, unless if you have some Activators or Legends class. And again, just not really a great figure to begin with. The few standouts in Voyager class, Rekgar, Optimus, Shockwave and Blitzwing. I have all four of these figures and they are all fantastic. I want to get the repaint of Shockwave that's purple, but he is really hard to find. Blitzwing, the triple changer modes, they just work so well with each other. The cannons and you even get blast effects with these that was pretty rare back then. Occasionally you would get blast effects, but not too often like how it is today. So seeing that on a Voyager back then was insane. And Optimus, he does have inaccurate weapons, but they're still cool. The axe is humongous, and it just looks kind of menacing for an Optimus to wield. Uh, and then he's got the cannon, which was a water gun feature, actually, which was kind of cool if you were a little kid. But, you know, it doesn't really matter when you're older, but it's still a cool little feature. And the vehicle mode and robot mode, so accurate to the cartoon. I'd say the worst about this Optimus is the uh, head feature. When you try and get him without the faceplate, 
the faceplate is just hanging off of his chin, and it just doesn't look good at all. They tried to copy what worked with the Cybertron 2005 leader class, and they basically failed. Um, in Shockwave, again, an amazing quadruple changer this time around. All the modes work and are genius in their own little way. Uh, the articulation is great. You got hand articulation, a nice ball-jointed head. It is, a little, it is a little lacking in the legs, but it is something you could get away with it, with some of the joints. And the big, huge arm cannon is just genius. I always love it when Shockwave has huge cannons, especially with the Energon Shock Blast. And Rekgar, he's just a well-put-together, solid Voyager. Uh, he doesn't really do much in features, which is fine, but just the articulation and the way he transforms is just so fun. I find myself picking him up sometimes to just play with because he's just a nice handy figure. But yeah, guys, that about does it for uh, the animated toy line for Deluxe's Voyagers and Leaders. Some of the standouts, to me at least. Uh, if you guys have different standouts, let me know, let me know down in the comments below some of your favorite animated figures in the toy line. All my social medias are linked down below, including my email. If you guys want to hit me up about business inquiries, if you want to message me about whatever, or if you want to commission a diorama from me because I make dioramas for people for their stop motions, photography, or your regular display shelves in your homes, you can either hit me up on any of my social media accounts or just email me and we can work out a deal. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching this video. Catch y'all in the next one. Bye.